All right, so for this lesson today, I'm going to be drawing another two-point perspective drawing. And this time it's going to be a Frank Lloyd Wright building. And uh, he's a pretty famous architect. If you don't know this building or who he is, he was pretty much the biggest architect in American history. And this is probably one of his most famous works. It's in northern Pennsylvania, and you can actually visit it because it's in the state pretty easily. So I'm going to be drawing from this image right here I found on Google Images. And this is a pretty good candidate for a, uh, a reference image because it kind of shows both sides of the building in pretty good view. Most other uh, pictures are kind of at the angle. It's kind of hard to see the whole thing, but this is, I like this one. So I'm going to be drawing from this. So to start off, I'm just going to um, kind of eyeball this the same way I did with that other building a couple of lessons ago, where uh, I look at where most lines are converging on one side. So we're going to have two points, just like the other building from Marywood, which I drew um, the left second point is going to be uh, so far off you can't really see it, so it's going to have an effect, but we're not really going to draw it because it's going to be so far off our piece of paper. And on the right here, uh, this one is definitely going to be uh, on the page. It looks like it converts or it converges right about here. So I'm going to draw where my, um, my field of view is going to have the horizon, which is going to be a little bit less than half the way down from the page. So that's going to be right here. I'm just going to draw a horizontal line going through that point. And again, our left point is a little bit off the view, but we're still going to be drawing as if it's there. So next thing I'm going to do is kind of draw what it looks like that corner of the building is. And that's a little bit off center, maybe about right here in our field of view. And I can actually just start blocking in some of the stuff here. So um, I've got like a little tree right here. I'm just going to kind of do that just to see how much room it's taking up. like a rock right about here. There's some trees in the back here. I'm just going to kind of sketch an outline of this so I know where my bounds are in the drawing. And now I'm just going to start drawing the actual image. So I'm going to draw a point that's intercepting these two points. I'm going to pull that back a bit and stop right about here. I'm going to have this one intercept the point again on our little vertical line. It's going to be pulled toward our uh, right horizon line, or uh, excuse me, our right vanishing point on the horizon line. And I'm just going to cut that in half with a small line. And I'm going to do the same thing on the left here. But I'm going to keep in mind that my Vanishing point that I'm connecting to is very far off the page, just like our last one. Something like that. Maybe a bit further back. section is kind of going back this way. That's the railing on the other side of this little cantilever bit. This is kind of where the railing ends. So this is that manila covered, uh, colored portion of the wall right there. <clears throat> and this large stone vertical section, the pillar starts a little bit to the right of this, maybe a couple of inches from this. I'm just going to draw that. I 
Again, I want all these to be as straight as possible. So I want to uh, avoid freehanding any of your vertical or horizontal lines, because if you do, it will kind of, um, it just, it won't, it won't look quite as accurate as if you were to use a uh, straight edge. And in perspective drawing, you can see how subtle some of these little lines are. Most of them aren't that important, but if you're doing really subtle stuff, it will start to show up if you, um, if you skimp on the details. So I'm gonna make this very sharp and as crisp as possible and clean. Got a portion of the upper left half of the screen that's kind of protruding out there. So I'm going to draw that next. It's kind of a little outcropping of rock right here on the left of our railing. I'm going to try to draw that as best I can. Maybe I'll make that a bit higher. And the rest is kind of obscured by weeds here. And I start to draw that pillar that's kind of hidden from our field of view. Let me get back to this, because that's what I was drawing originally. So right now, looking at that, it's kind of hard to tell what part is where. So I'm going to start drawing some of the texture here just to kind of clarify some of the ambiguity of this shape. stone. So I'm going to be using that technique I did before where I kind of show um, why I draw part of the texture but not all of it just to save time. Although I will come back to this. I'm just going to draw some quick lines here. And fill in some of them. So we can see what that's made of. Now I'm going to maybe start transitioning to this window here. So. Technique with the uh, 
drawing some of the texture, but not, not all of it, isn't really going to work on the window because that's something we can't really skimp on because it'll look kind of cheap in a way. So I'm going to draw all this. Making sure all these lines are going toward one of the two vanishing points. Once again, making sure that my straight edge is always intercepting or reaching toward the point, uh, our vanishing point and the point we're drawing from. It's very important to make things look consistent. I'm going to repeat that process on our little left side of that window there. I'm going to back away just kind of make sure that makes sense. This line should, could be straighter. Okay, and I'm going to start working on more of the building. like the building well I already drew this part so this is going to be where one side of the building ends it's going to be our main visual center this is where everything on this side is going to go to this side this is going to go to this side and then these left sections are going to go to our invisible point
For shading, you don't really have to use the straight edge much because that would take up a lot of time. But for creating the actual drawing and like the building and the rooms, I would definitely recommend.
And I would call that a pretty uh, finished Frank Lloyd Wright building. Drawing, at least, wise. There's a lot I could add to this to improve it, but I'm going to stop there because I think I like it the way it is. Working with the, uh, the point we can't see, again, is going to be a bit of a problem, but that's something we kind of are going to run into whenever you're drawing from life. And by that, I mean drawing while actually being on site or drawing from an image. Um, I mean, I guess it's not really drawing from life if you're drawing from uh, an image, but it's a lot different than drawing from your imagination, because when you're drawing from your imagination, you can take a lot more um, artistic license and no one's going to call you out on it or question it. But if you're drawing something that's uh, it's a real building in real life that people recognize, especially if it's one from your school or your hometown, you definitely want to uh, use the principles to the, your full extent of your knowledge. You don't want to take too many liberties uh, or else people might notice. Um, it, it really depends on what the level you're trying to work at. I mean, for this, I was just aiming to uh, recreate the image as best I could. and uh, I just switch between, just because of the setup I'm using, I just switch between the actual image and the, uh, the whiteboard. And again, writing on whiteboard is a lot harder than drawing on pencil and paper. On pencil and paper, it's very small and easy. You can bust out a drawing quick. So. Probably should start doing this. Send more name. Great work, everyone, on your drawings. I mean, I haven't had a chance to look at, uh, to see what everyone's doing in depth, but I can imagine if you're following these steps, you probably will get something close to what you're looking to get. So just keep a positive attitude at all times, and uh, yeah, keep working. Okay, thank you, Joseph. Um, does anybody have any questions about perspective drawing? All right, I'm gonna stop this video and I'll post it.